ലീഡേഴ്സ് and once in quarter in each city we have an offline networking meet to network support and grow with the leaders that's when we call it leaders create more leaders currently all are muted and we will be giving an opportunity to speak to our guest mr rajesh mohata ceo and executive director jsr lifestyle limited and author of the week dr mahesh abhyankar author of the book moz Before you are unmuted, let me share that we are currently live on LinkedIn and this episode LC0112 is being recorded. First time visitors may click on the WhatsApp, Facebook and LinkedIn link on the chat box to get updated, join, updated by joining us in creating more leaders. All in-house are requested to turn on your videos which will help in making episode highly interactive. So... Are we all ready to interact with our guest, Mr. Rajesh Mota, CEO and Executive Director, JSL Lifestyle Limited, and author of the week, Dr. Mahesh Abhyankar, author of the topic of Want to Lead, Lead to, Learn to Lead. Then share a thumbs up or smiley emoji in the chat box. Thank you. Before introducing... of the guests let me also introduce ms divya leadership coach who will interact with our guests along with the panel discussion leader ms alagar lakshmanan from i shall uh, welcome you all over to you ms divya of JSL Lifestyle and we welcome our panel discussion leader uh, Ms. Alagu Lakshmanan, the NLP Life Coach and founder of All Is Well. We welcome you all for enjoying today's episode and joining us and as a moderator, uh, I'd be here to help you in any of the aspects if it is not, uh, if it is connecting or anything of that aspect. Visitors and members, as we all listen to the panel discussion on the specific topic, born to lead and lead to, to uh, lead, learn to lead. we request you all members and visitors to keep our videos on so that it makes more interactive and lively so i am transferring or giving the mic to the panel discussion ms alagu lakshmanan so that she can continue our panel discussion with our chief guest uh, mr rajesh mohata before that we'll have a small introduction round uh, introduction video of uh, mr rajesh anisha can you please play, play the video for us
Thank you very much, Nisha, for the introduction video of our chief guest. Now I hand over the mic to our guest and to our panel discussion leader. Um, you may uh, start asking your question, Ms. Uh, Aladu Lakshmi. Thank you, Divya. Welcome. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So good evening, Mr. Rajesh Mahata and uh, all the guests uh, here. Uh, shall we start the discussion? Yeah, yeah, sure. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. So, uh, good evening, sir. so, good evening. May we know, in your opinion, are leaders born or made? Okay, that's a very interesting question. In fact, and we usually um, have heard about the stories of uh, the God Ram or God uh, Krishna, where they started from the very beginning. They started showing the leadership skills. You know, the Kr Krishna's story where he has started at the age of 12. In fact, he has uh, um, uh, killed so many of the Rakshasas by the time. So if you look from that, then you will see the leaders are born. I will put this thing in uh, two ways. My perspective, basically, I, I do not claim that I am a born leader, obviously. Okay. So the, the leaders are actually the natural leaders or leaders are basically nurtured leaders. So this is why I will put it because everybody has to uh, become a leader over a period of time. Somebody uh, gets more nurturing, more uh, advices and they start inculcating habits. So they become a more better leader. Some people usually are just having a normal qualities, but they just like to lead a small uh, group of people. I will give a small example here. In our families, who is the leader? When, when we are a kid, our father is a leader for us. Yeah. But if sometimes in some houses mother is a leader, sometimes father goes out, then the mother becomes leader. We look to mother for every decision. So she becomes leader. When mother, father both goes out, then we start looking to the eldest brother or sister and they become leader and they started directing us. Abhi tum khana khao, abhi tum ye uh -huh. karo and main sabse badi hu, main sabse badi hu. These type of things start coming into it. So are they born leader? If they actually become a leader as an, when there was an opportunity. Uh -huh. okay. so, so, so this is the thing which is there. So as soon as you start taking a position where you start leading a team is become when then you become a leader according to me the bone leader bone qualities which are there in everybody but those qualities how somebody is utilizing makes them bone leader like uh, empathy with others intelligences which are there or observation skills sometimes they have a natural charisma they are they are more um, uh, sweet talker or something like this that makes them a sort of very sought after people and the people start looking to them and they start uh, uh, getting themselves attached to them so that is called as born leader qualities according to me mm -hmm. but obviously you cannot leave and become a leader only because of this except you are a film star or something like this so you have to become a leader when you have to show your other qualities where you talk about your vision your uh, empathy towards the people, respect towards the people, your thinking process, your uh, communication skills, all these things comes over a period of time. And that is where I believe not only the natural, but you have to nurture yourself to become a leader. And I believe I am part of that type of thing. I was not that natural leader, but I am a nurtured leader where I was trained by my gurus, by my parents or by my seniors in my organizations. And I learned a lot from them. And that's where I became a leader over a period of time. That was also part of a question where I wanted to ask you if you're a nurtured leader or a, by nature you're a leader. Because your academic background shows you you're a topper in yeah. all your uh, career, throughout your career. So maybe you have that qualities also and then you nurtured yourself to become a leader. Correct. So, so intelligence is, is a natural ability, which is uh -huh. there. But how you use that intelligence to get into the right track is more important. So some people, so I will put, I will give you another example. You, you might be seeing some, some people who are very fast in opening the locks of any car or any door or which is there. They are also intelligent people. But until unless they are using it for theft or burglary, then it has been called as a, a wrong leadership style. But if they are using it to help somebody, then it is called as right leadership style. So intelligence and how it has been used is important. How you make use of it. Yeah. Thank you for that uh, beautiful explanation. And uh, what was the moment in your life that defines you, the leader that is born? 
can you cite any example of your leadership and how uh, can you explain the journey of the transition when you become a leader sure so i i will start from a different topic altogether when i was asked to come as a speaker and talk about any of the leadership threats where it is and when this topic came i said i would like to talk on this topic because all other topics everybody can talk but now i'll tell you what has happened with me and why i have to take a leadership position. on that day i realized i am a leader see okay yeah the, the one is that you become a leader because you are being made leader so so that was one point which is made leader where like uh, in a class you have been made monitor so you mm. become leader or in a house mummy has told you that you take care of all your brothers and sister you become leader or in an office you are being appointed as a manager and there are people to whom you are going to surprise you become a leader so they are made leaders people may not be respecting them because of their knowledge skills or anything but because of their position and authorities mm-hmm. so i was if you look from that as soon as you become a manager or somebody is below you obviously you become a leader because to him or her the leader, the leader. Yeah, the boss, yeah. mm-hmm. so i was there but was i a leader or was i a made uh, imposed leader i would like to put it this way mm-hmm. so i would say that my leadership style born when actually i was in a plant position when i was in odisha i was taking care of uh, alumina, alumina refinery plant and obviously i was one of the senior position member but i was not the topmost position so my ceo was there and i was reporting to him and obviously again as a leadership you always go and talk to the ceo whenever there is a problem and he you believe him that he is a troubleshooter for you yeah. so that was the thing so i was also like that okay anything will happen ceo is there we have to do our job i was one of the head of the department so one day the ceo was not in the plant he went out for some meeting outside of the location he was in bhuneshwar and i was in the plant location and then there was some labor unrest which has taken place now there was there were three more seniors along with me um, after the ceo there were di- different department heads but none of them has take, come forward and took the ownership that okay we will go and resolve and i was feeling agitated why these laborers are standing and wh- nobody is going and talking to them and resolving this labor unrest and this is not fine so after one hour or two hour i th- i said that let me go out and start talking to them despite it was not my part of the business i just yeah. came went out i started talking to them although i was not able to understand the proper issue but i started understanding then i started consoling them i started finding out the solutions i called collector or the local leader and i said that this is the problem we need to resolve these are the things which we can do and then once it, it all got resolved and then i came back and i called my ceo that things have been settled and this is what was the problem and things has been settled he said this is what actually i was looking from a leader like you and oh. then that day i realized that this was the leadership trigger point so the leader was born <laughs> correct correct so on that day i realized that coming not only watching a thing but looking into it and coming forward and taking ownership taking of ownership, that issue yeah, exactly is yeah. a born leadership and from that day i am talking about almost uh, 17 years ago okay from that day till today i usually jump forward and i said if there is anything issue i will jump forward and i will say i will take charge of it and i will resolve it Okay. rather than i will wait someone else to resolve it so that is one part of the thing which i believe has made me a born lead. um the <laughs> leadership has born on that day although yeah. i was born earlier yeah that was very nice and uh, actually yeah. on that day on that day i spoke to all my other peers that uh, why don't we go and resolve but nobody was nobody volunteered okay. to say this is not my job uh this thing was not anybody's job but somebody has to come forward and correct resolve. yeah that is one point and i will give you another point which is there is the new thing when the people start accepting you as a leader that is again a very important thing correct it, yeah one part of thing but how the people start accepting it once you go out of the way and start protecting them not because uh, that you want to protect them from any harm but you start telling them i am with you you go forward and i am take going to take care of you in case anything goes wrong, goes wrong and something like this you take a decision i am with you i am behind you i will support you i will protect you if anything goes wrong the day you start talking in this language to your subordinates or the people around you they will automatically start treating you as a leader because they know that person this is what was happening with the krishna bhagwan or ramchandra ji or anything i am taking a big name but they were always being worshiped because 
देवर गांव में ज्यादा बारिश हो गया एवरीबडी वेंट टू कृष्ण भगवान प्लीज सेव एंड you do your job and i'm going to take care of you and that is where people have to start having a faith and they start treating you as a leader yeah yeah true, true. especially when you're in industry uh, industry domain correct this correct. is more required yeah correct true. so as you examine your own leadership uh, what were the values that you as leader exemplified also what values motivates the decision you make correct okay so i i will i will um, reply to the first point which is there mm. yeah so another way of looking into how you inculcate leadership in you and i'm putting it in a slightly on a opposite side of it one you see a good role model oh this is the person who is doing like this and i should follow him the another side of it is you see a wrong wrong uh, role model oh this fellow is not doing like this i should i mean, this is not the right practice and you start learning from there Uh, so sometimes when once i i had an issue with my uh, some of the senior where he was doing a partial treatment to one of the our colleague and i was always thinking why he, he this fellow is only supporting that person and not any other person i said the day i will become a leader i will not do like this uh, okay. similarly there was one person who was always just like without giving any direction was listening and then okay you decide what you want to do something like that of attitude i said if the person is coming to him they are looking for an advice they are looking for some guidance and if he is not able to give guidance and advice then he is not a leader uh-huh. so again that came as a this thing a point to me that if i have to become a leader i have to give people advice i have to tell them what is right what is wrong at least i may not be able to support 100% but at least i should do 100% of my bit that's what i thought and these are the things which has come into me so basically what i learned is that you should create an integrity integrity when i'm talking what is not the integrity with respect to the that you will not do any mischiefs or something like this integrity means i am honest to myself whatever i am doing i am doing honestly i am not cheating myself inner self that that conviction is, yeah mm. that is most important thing if and yeah rightly you have used the right word that conviction is one of the point that i am there and i know what i am doing is right the second is accountability if anything goes wrong by you or by the people to whom you or for by the people to whom you are leading mm-hmm. then again that is a point where you start saying that i am accountable and people start appreciating you which i mentioned earlier as well yeah third thing which is there is empathy which is most important thing for a leader that they have to understand the problem of others and then start um, creating a sol- providing a solution until unless you are not able to have empathy towards others you will never be able to win heart of the people that is the third thing which i learned and i started following the same thing and the fourth most important thing from my point is people look to the leaders because they need a direction they need an inspiration so until unless you cannot create an inspiration direction give them a vision even if you do not want to follow but if you are able to tell them tell others that this is the way you have to go or this is the way this is the right way this itself create a leadership for you or for someone else yeah. so that is where i thought that i should always start looking into how i can inspire people or how i can motivate people or give them a direction or vision towards what we are supposed to do mm-hmm. and last thing which is which i believe and i have developed in myself is creating a team work so appreciating people for doing what they are and creating a team bonding so that everybody remains together because if a leader is is not able to manage a team or create a team then obviously he will have only one follower or two followers yeah so then he is not a leader correct so, so i felt that you should or one should have a collaborative or team work approach which is there so that uh, you know the team size keeps increasing and the leader is being appreciated by more and more people so these are the three four points which i have inculcated in me as a to create a leader between me and what was your second point yeah second was i had asked you so also what values motivates so as you said uh, conviction and uh, right. being true to yourself yeah and and the and the the fourth um, the values which actually i i believe a leader should have is that basically they should be trustworthy so people should should be blindly following him because they know that this fellow is not going to give us a wrong advice or he will always be with me he will be supporting me so that trust they have to create 
that is one thing honesty and integrity i have already spoken so yeah, yeah, yeah. another aspect which is there nowadays one more concept which is coming is servant leadership basically that's very common word nowadays that very everybody common, yeah. should look into that how can i help you and to make you successful so that these are the few things which are now coming and but according to me there is one more thing which is there is um, ethics and justice if you are ethical in what you are doing like i have seen uh, you are the leader who is driving a team but he is talking about only a smaller part of the thing and that's where the sustainability concept comes into the picture that i will not only will be doing for myself but i will be creating something which is sustainable for others and usually now you might be seeing all global leaders are talking about the sustainability, sustainability. Like all the things because this is what, what the leaders are supposed to do they are supposed to inspire people to create a sustainability create a uh, ethical business environment for others and do a right justice for the people it, they should not be biased they should not be giving a wrong um, treatment to the people uh, just because of the short term benefit so these are the things which i believe is required and obviously everybody looks from to leaders so that they can grow along with them so leader has to continuously inspire people for growing along with them uh, they should also ensure that uh, the all the organization or the country or city or whatever they are representing will also grow very well explained uh, sir and uh, as you said the values are so important like you know uh, be it for a leader or be it for any individual when you have those values the leadership quality grows along with that right correct yeah so and uh, you have mentioned few but i i'm giving it again as a question i'm repeating it what are the some morally imperative must for a leadership born or made i already mentioned that but yeah. uh, uh, okay let let me put it slightly now because repeating all those things will not be right thing yeah if any any more if you would like to add yeah. on to that so, so so one thing which i have mentioned and uh, usually people in when since i come from a corporate organization is stakeholder management that's a very important thing for a leader to not only ensure that employees but customers but the suppliers but the authorities and co community at, at large basically they all should be taken care of and the it is a it is a duty and responsibility of leader to ensure that everybody is inclined towards the same goal vision which leader has created so that stakeholder management is very very important and okay. leader should work towards it second point which i always preach and talk about is networking because leader has to create a networks because they may be requiring a support sometimes to achieve their vision or to lead a team so they should have very good network you know in good old days uh, there was one king who who was being attacked by his enemies then he was going and approaching another king please send your army yeah. because you have to do it if that networking boy will not be there so now <laughs> you are isolated you know yeah. so this is what is required the networking yeah. is very very important according to me for a leader to grow or manage his leadership position that is the point which i believe is there now it is another thing which is being expected from leader is they they should be at par with or contemporary with what is happening like if ai is being spoken and there is a mere ko ai nahi pata i do not want to understand yeah. what it is they will be left out people will not go and approach him because you are outdated leader you are yeah. there, but you are outdated leader True. so this, obviously you have to maintain yourself in, with the innovation and yeah. be adaptable of the technology or things which is there and this is what including of data and information which which is a must for a leader that what is happening in and around so that they can talk along with it and that way i believe some of the leaders today they always talk from a data point that india has so many things or this and that this actually creates a leadership style because you, if you are uh, having a hands on data then you know what is right what is wrong and where what need to be corrected so i believe that is one important thing which is there and above all if you look into it and one single point which is there is leader should should talk about a strategy which is always leadership and a strategy goes hand in hand so what is your if um, it is being nowadays is called as strategic leadership yeah <laughs> so that strategy or innovative thinking people expect from a leader that you will tell me something different oh. even up from a companies like ge or companies like uh, microsoft 
companies like google you talk to their leaders to understand what they are thinking so that yeah. is job bezos is still being uh, understood that way that what he is thinking yeah. so, so since you mentioned the word uh, strategy that was one of my question which i had in my mind uh, so what was any strategic decision that you had taken you have immense experience uh, in the industry area so which you can recollect now and tell like that was like a great strategic decision and which helped your yourself and the company okay again i will tell you another example so the when the uh, once upon a time when i was looking into it the whole of the world was importing bauxite from australia or indonesia and then we we were just because these were the only countries where the bauxite was available in fact and being mined and i was actually looking for that what else can be done because i was in a dire need of uh, bauxite to run my plant then i said that what else can be done so we started looking into the the reserves bauxite reserves geographic uh, ge- uh, geological reserves which are there and then we found out that the largest bauxite reserves in the world are in africa but nobody was going to africa because it was obviously a third world country and nobody wanted to go into and they were actually not that developed i'm talking about almost 15 20 years ago then we found out that there was one chinese company and one russian company is already there okay so i just took a flight for that country went there without knowing what i am supposed to do i just found out where the indian consulate is i went to the indian consulate and i said i came from india and i need your help in establishing my connects here they said why you came directly here i said because if i would have been sitting there i would not have been able to understand the what is the problems or what are the things which is possible here when i came here i found chinese and russians are already there why i am not here india is the second largest population country and we should be here in africa he said yeah yeah i know i am we are only 20 people in this country who are from india and then he started connecting me with the people and from that day till today the my astral organization is still importing up bauxite from africa and that was the first thing so i i usually talk to my uh, old colleagues and i said you know for you i am vasco de gama in columbus <laughs> i i i found out bauxite <laughs> which part of africa so it is uh, guinea conakry okay 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 so that was awesome yeah so that was a vasco de gama <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah true true because mm-hmm. they also came went from spain and the other locations portugal and they came to india to in yeah, search yeah. of um, what is the the spice route and all these things you know and so i did i i, I found out bauxite route that's how it is so that was a gut feel that you had to travel to africa or you just correct, correct, correct. because yeah. sitting and not doing anything is not actually a leadership job so i said no i would like to go there i would like to see if it is possible or not possible explore the options correct you may come uh, empty handed but until unless you not go you do not know whether you will come yeah, empty handed exactly. or you will get the gold mine true true yeah that was awesome so <laughs> so so these are the and you know this is what i am giving as one incidents but there are many in fact yeah and you know some the, there is an um, item which is being said necessity is mother of invention Yeah, yeah but i put it differently i said leadership actually comes and creates inventions because <laughs> you start to thinking as from a leader's point of view why like this why not other way like other this? way yeah yeah so this is how the things starts happening yeah so you'll have to be creative also you know correct, to correct. Out, think out of the box correct that's what i'm saying strategic thinking yeah. and uh, looking towards innovation yeah thank you so much sir it was very wonderful uh, discussion if any of you would like to add on to the questions prakash thank you uh, ms alagu for the panel discussion it was wonderful looking at you having a discussion you know thanks to rajesh mr rajesh to share yeah. uh, all the real time experience you know it's it's more like we don't have to think of what has been happening and what are you talking about it's more of a real time experience you just made it as a crux of the story which you've experienced so that we can realize it a little better okay especially yeah, we can relate to the stories right so correct. when he when he spoke with real time examples i could imagine rajesh mohata standing and talking to me right when when he said something about you know going to uh, 
Africa and I was like wow that is something which is yeah, really that was a long moment <laughs> yeah it is more like spontaneous isn't it I didn't expect it to come and it just happened yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, more than anything I just wanted to add on one thing being cool as a leader is also very very important nowadays you know creative imaginative all that is fine but being cool makes you inspired yeah I mean he is so uh, experienced and he's so much he's come with he's come with so much of an experience and exposure but still he is very cool not weight headed oh. very light headed he's like he's able to connect with everybody like he was mentioning a, a lot about networking right that is one specific word right now we all are using thank you very much uh, rajesh talking about all that so i open it for uh, you know for me to think oh okay i'm still in the game it's it's so, cool to know i i would like to add here i i, I don't know i i can talk in this but there is a hindi song ek din bik jayega maati ke mol jag mein reh jayenge pyare tere bol Okay. So, so this is the <laughs> mantra actually. People only remember your good words. Correct. Whatever you shout on the people, whatever you do, they will never be able to look into it. But as soon as you start appreciating somebody and you say that no, you have done a wonderful job, and I was expecting this. My my boss told me eighteen years ago, and I still remember. He said this yeah. is what I was expecting from a leader. Exactly. I still remember. He might be have scolded me many times. I I just forgot them, but only one sentence I know. And like you were mentioning about the values, you know, appreciation, integrity. So I always believe that you have to tell good thing about this. This is what it is, and they will carry with them. Correct. Stay with you forever. Correct. And you, they'll also be inspired by the way you tell them, and they'll take it forward to their, you know, subordinates as well. They just of, pass it on. Some of my old colleagues still call. Sir, one day you told me, na, that I will become a department head. Sir, I am telling you, I become a department head. I want to thank you for this. So I forgot when I told you. Yeah, right, right. right. He remembers. Right. So that's the impact. Correct. Great. It's it's a great discussion, great panel discussion because, like I said, it was not more like a question and answer. It's about a discussion that what and all experience uh, Rajesh, Mr. Rajesh has gone through. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Alagu, for the wonderful questions. Thank you. Thanks. I think Rajesh took it forward so well. <laughs> so true. So true. I should agree a lot. Um, now we have a small quiz round for all our viewers. Uh, I'm gonna hand over the mic to uh, Mr. Nellai Nayagam to uh, conduct the quiz with the panel discussion we had today. It is for all the members and the viewers. So I am. I'm. giving it over to mr mr nellin i come now for the quiz session good evening one yeah good evening one and all uh, thanks to visa training for this opportunity as a quiz leader uh, really wonderful insights about the uh, how to learn the new skills and grow the uh, leadership uh, competency sir um, i really impressed your point that uh, taking accountability of the uh, team's failure and uh, giving a freedom to take a, a risk on uh, on the given task and as well as uh, your uh, boxit supply from africa it is a uh, really uh, uh, impressive so uh, i actually i thought that uh, you will uh, um, <clears throat> get more details about the boxit from africa but uh, instead of it you said uh, you will uh, fly to africa and uh, um, get more details then uh, really uh, i it is a, a out of uh, box idea so i, I really uh, uh, admired on your point sir and uh, so let's see uh, who is the lucky winner of this uh, quiz week uh, quiz so the fastest fingers first uh, uh, let's see who writes the correct answer in the uh, chat box uh, yeah my question is uh, mr rajesh uh, mahadatta uh, felt is a leader uh, born on the day of the labor unrest by uh, by demonstrated one uh, key leader's quality um, can you mention that what is the key quality of the leader uh, demonstrated on the day if uh, if there is no clue i can give options okay, okay. maybe i can give options be great if you give us options uh, yeah yeah that's why i'm just pasting it uh, Oh, great. Wow. Yeah. Uh, congrats, uh, Sandil Kumar, uh, for the uh, uh, right answer. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Rajesh sir mentioned about the taking ownership uh, is the uh, 
the key quality he has demonstrated on the day. So, congrats. Uh, winner of this uh, week, uh, Chris, is Mr. Sindhil Kumar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nellan Ayagam, for conducting the quiz. And congratulations, Sindhil. Your uh, um, gift for the uh, you know quiz is uh, from our author of the day today, Mr. Dr. Mahesh Abhyankar. He is a, he's a author of uh, Emojil, the book. And uh, it is a beautifully crafted uh, short book which has short stories with uh, real life psychological issues, you know, which might inspire you to transform their situation. So this is uh, a small gist of what is he written as a book. So um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Dr. Mahesh Abhyankar here, uh, our author of the day today. Sir, the mic is over to you, sir, today. One of the very important point for a leader is also emotional fitness. So true, sir. Voyaging through the garden of life, emotions sometimes are raised, sometimes slippery moss. Feelings arise in uh, colors as well as shades. Inner turmoil covers the skies, smile fades. Pain in the heart sings aloud, logic ceases. Now, this is the emotional turmoil we come across in our day to day life. Now, we are actually in living in a hurrying life, right? Early in the morning, we get up, we start uh, running for our job. Then whole uh, day, we are uh, doing a lot of staggerous work and then got exhausted, come back and then try to sleep on the bed. And uh, again, uh, we are not getting sleep there. So we want to relax. And for relaxing, again, we take another options, like options like uh, listening to music, going into social media, drinking. So the new kind of uh, activities get added. So the problem here is that uh, millions of uh, uh, neurons get activated through a lot of sensory inputs throughout the day. We don't want to uh, relax ourselves. And any sensory input what we get, it is going to create uh, imagine, uh, some image in uh, the brain. And that is a property of the brain itself. So what happens is that the peace in the life uh, slowly, slowly goes down. And we start searching for the peace. We hardly get time to halt or relax. Then uh, introspect ourselves, analyze what we are doing. And the day comes, and that is a day basically a wake-up call for everybody. So similarly, in 2019, there was a wake-up call. And the wake-up call is given by in the form of COVID-19. There was a tremendous lockdown. And that lockdown has also caused emotional lockdown. Right, Many people have experienced a lot of changes in the emotions during this particular period of time. And those emotions, they never experienced throughout their life. A lot of people who are having anxiety, some form of stress. They don't know what is going to happen, whether the person will be get infected, what will happen to my family. And in many people, what has happened is emotions become so volcanic. So all these different, different emotions which are uh, there, what we have observed, as a doctor, as well as my colleague, uh, Arti Burj, she's a psychologist. So we try to capture that in a book called as Emozil. And the title was uh, Emozil, the saga of uh, emotional lockdown. And the theme for this particular book was break, make, and awake. Break means the people are emotionally uh, broken down. Make means they are trying to make themselves through this particular period. And this is a sign of awakening, somewhere that uh, person going towards a peace. What we have done is that we uh, dedicated this book to all the people who have served humanity during the COVID times. Their dedication, their selfless work, and they become inspirations for many during this particular period of time. So actually, uh, as Divya has rightly mentioned, that these emotional stories are uh, people who are actually a common people, what we have seen around, but they have done uh, or they have experienced uncommon uh, stories during this particular period of time. Now, let us say one of the story. One of the stories related to uh, how the sensory inputs creates a problem. There was a news. There was a news from the paper. There was news from WhatsApp. There was social media, news from the television. All are breaking news daily. And people have to develop a habit that early in the morning, they will see how many number of people are affected, how many people are deaths, what is happening globally, what is happening in India. Now, these kind of uh, news experiences definitely is going to create a havoc. So there is something called as garbage in and garbage out. So whatever you are going to feed, that is going to have got an impact. 
So there was a story of a, a person, corporate person who is basically working and he, because of the news, which started way back from China. So he was experiencing all these news day and night and he got uh, get stuck to that particular need. And actually when uh, the COVID came to India, at that time, this person is collapsed emotionally. So it has really affected uh, the person's uh, normal health as well as his occupation. And then how he come out of the situation and his old hobby of uh, music helps him to come out of this particular whole episode. So that was a story of making as well as awakening. There is another important point is that the whole occupations uh, during this particular period has uh, dramatically changed. And not only I am telling COVID, but I think post-COVID also. So there was a story of a boy who uh, obviously married and gone to US with a lot of aspiration and dreams. But uh, Boston to Bardoli, he has he lo lo loses his job during a particular period of time. He has to come back to India. And then his uh, new struggle begins during this particular period of time. There was a story of an NGO girl which is there in the uh, city doing some uh, good social work during this particular period of time. But the city was closed totally. The hostels, nobody, uh, the hostel, uh, nobody hostel is there. Everybody has ran off. And then she, that girl is in trouble. So what she does, her uh, boyfriend helps her to go to village and whatever she was doing in the urban setting, she starts doing in the rural settings. Is another story of uh, a young uh, boy and, uh, who is basically a cricketer, having a career, then girlfriend as a dancer. On 14th February, they celebrated very nicely. The next 14th February, they, it was a marriage for them. And in the March, this COVID came. And in the next eight to nine months, they don't have got assignment in dancing. They don't have got assignment in cricket. And obviously, the whole uh, occupational issues started in their particular career leading to emotional issues. So what we observed is that during this particular period of time, it was a reskilling or it was upskilling or repurposing during this particular period of time and the occupational fitness, because it is very important for every person is that every three to five years of career, you have to be occupationally fit. And as uh, Rajesh uh, was also telling that uh, the if AI is coming, then you have to get adaptation to AI. Then it is going to be very, very critical. The same thing happened is that during this particular period of time, there was a repurposing of majority of the jobs. That is so right, sir. Thank you very yeah. much for all the explanation you've given. Yeah. It is uh, great to know that you have invested so much of your thought and your experience into this book. Um, uh, we are all pleasure to, you know, and the honor to know that there is a book which can heal you from inside and know the psychological effect, psychological effect of what is the issues you go through. It's great uh, um, talking and knowing about the book today, sir, Dr. Mahesh. Um, I appreciate all the explanation you've given today, sir. Uh, going forward with the episode today, we will have uh, open questions for uh, Mr. Rajesh. We have, because of the time limit, we have two questions uh, uh, in the open forum. So this goes in two ways. Either you can write it in the chat box and I can read that. Or I can unmute you if you raise your hands in the emoji. Uh, before that, Tarun was already posted a question here. So I'm going to read that out for you, Mr. Rajesh. He's asking, out of Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, Dhoni, who is the better leader and why? Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli and Dhoni. Yeah, who is a better leader and why? Okay, so... Obviously, I, I, I will put it uh, Dhuni as a better leader. It is my personal opinion. And I, I, I will like to put it differently. Sachin Tendulkar, according to me, was more of a personal performance wise. He's the best because he he's a master and of his business and he knows how it has to be done. But what is required is to create a change management, which was there before Dhuni and I will put it, at, uh, in fact, a Saurabh Ganguly, that name has not came up here. But Correct. those are the people who have actually created the, the teamwork which was required in Indian team at that time. Indian cricket team was more of a solo performance team. After right. the 1983 World Cup, everything was a solo performance. It, the whole team was either it was uh, Kapil Dev or Srikant or Ravi Shastri or the individual players which were there. But it, there was no... Teamwork which was there. So everybody right from uh, the first to last, all 11 players were not working as a complete performer which was there. So that is started from Ganguly has started and then 
Dhoni actually has taken for almost seven or eight years till he was there in the team. He actually created this thing where he has not only created the teamwork, he has uh, created a culture of leading from the front. And that is where people have started inspiring and uh, getting inspiration from him and started working towards that. So that is what I believe as a team leader, that is more important to be required that how you motivate not only to others, but also create a team to work towards a single goal of winning the, whatever it is, the target is. So the, the word goes to Dhoni now. He's a better leader. <laughs> okay. So we have one more question can be asked. So if anybody wants to ask, you can raise your hands or you can post it in the chat box. I can ask it on behalf of you. Or we can, uh, if we don't have a lot of questions, we can proceed with the next part of our episode. Okay. So in the meantime, I have a question, sir. Um, so like you were mentioning, uh, there are a lot of real-time experience which we gain so that we share and inspire others, right? Uh, likewise, we also have bitter experiences at some point in time in our life. Now, like you said, of course, you will take up the appreciation and you will create the impact on the others and then you move on. How about you go through that bitter experience, you know, learn from it, create an opportunity and make sure that doesn't happen afterwards. How how do you process and, you know, emit that? So, so one of the, again, leadership style, which is there is the take a step back and you you know that there is a uh, usually there is a one story which is being said that before taking a jump loin has to take a step back and then they have to take a jump uh, otherwise you cannot do this thing so it is not that leaders do not get they, they do not bite the dust and they will not be having a bad days everybody has this thing but most important which is there is and which is usually being said that do not repeat your mistake learn from right. So that is what usually happens and we start looking into it that what are the things which has to be done. I will give another example uh, from my this thing that I was actually looking for um, sort of a buying and the selling. I was in during one part of my uh, tenure, I was actually buying and selling. But at that time, uh, I got an opportunity that instead of buying and selling, I can have my own uh, terminal rentals and then store because I was seeing the future will there will be prices which will be increasing and I can make a lot of money out of those trades. I I was not able to have that much of courage to take that much of the big position which was there because it requires a lot of money financing and all those things. So I said, why I should take so much of burden and then put that thing there. I just took a step back. And I said, no, perhaps I have, this will not be right uh, time for me doing it. What actually I learned was that if I would have taken it, I would have actually learned about how to manage the money, which I missed uh, on that day. After, when I took next time a call, I was knowing I was having a money and I was able to take the position. But that was more of a sort of a um, sponsored position rather than actually taking a challenging position. I, I kept that thing in my mind that I lost one opportunity. Otherwise... I made 100, suppose, in second deal, I would have made another 100 in the previous deal as well. Right. And you know what is there? Once you miss a thing, it never comes back. It never comes back. So this is this is lifelong. So I, after that, I started looking into it. I have to immediately start finding out either, whether I have to take that call or not. And that has actually prompted me taking a faster decisions rather Correct. than keep contemplating. Of course, you need to contemplate, but it cannot be protected. It has to be finally you have to close it and you have to take it. Yeah, it cannot go for a longer period correct, of time. Correct, correct. You, you have, you take have to close and move it forward. forward. Yeah. And follow it. Yeah, right. That is most important. Yes. We have Mr. Sandil Kumar with a with a question, I believe. Sir, uh, you can post your question, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, Devya, for the uh, nice interaction. And thank you, Rajesh, sir, for uh, giving us the uh, deeper insights about these uh, leadership uh, qualities. My question here is. Uh, as you said rightly, uh, that we need to jump into the situation. We should not wait for others to come and uh, give us the uh, role. So coming to this labor interest issue, after one hour, so you were having a courageous mind to, to jump into the uh, situation uh, to steer the team to to a right to set a right direction. But what made you to do that? Because it may be the role of a different person who is supposed to take the task and deliver. Right. So once you do it, you take the critic, there will be a conflict between the colleague and you who, who is supposed to do this. How do you address this and how did you overcome this? And how do we set uh, our limit and boundary in crossing the chasm with respect to our roles that has been assigned? Okay. So 
Um, that's a very good question. In fact, I should appreciate the way you have put the things into it. And it has happened. It has happened. But what has happened is I first went to that person who was responsible for this. And I said, this is the problem. You are also aware. I'm also aware. Why don't you take a call? He said, no, let's wait till the CEO comes. And we will take advice from him. And then we'll decide what has to be done. So I said that you do not have that much of time because you know when there is a labor unrest, situation can go out of control at any given point of time. You, we are sitting on a time bomb. So you cannot delay it. He said, no, no, but I, I will not be able to take a call and all. I said, one of us has to take a call. Either you have to take a call, I'm there with you. But he said, no, no, I, I, I do not want to take a call. Some what, Whatever may be the reason. So I immediately said, okay, let me go ahead and do this thing. So I took the call and I was... At the back of the mind, I was aware that I will be questioned that why did you jump there? But I was having only one point at, at that time in my mind is I have to resolve the problem which is there in front of me next. If I will start wondering about the previous, the next problem which is not there today, I will not be able to take the head on with the problem which is there in front of me. So that was the first point which is there. Obviously, consequences you have to face. I will put it the same way. You are going in a boat and the, there is a leakage is. So you have your first job will be to save the people rather than um, I if I will leave the boat boat and I have to go and pay to the boat owner what will what it will happen no you do not do like this you immediately take a call and you start saving life of the people around you so that is called as leadership now, rather than thinking about boat and the boat owner you start saving the life of the people is more important rest all can be taken later on. Thank you very much for the nice uh, right that you have uh, given sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sadil Kumar, for that question. Um, here, he's also a summary leader for us. So I welcome Mr. Samir, uh, Sadil Kumar to summarize the se session and the episode today. Thank you very much, Divya. And thank you for the opportunity given. And today's uh, session, in uh, the interest of time, I would like to give a crisp uh, uh, summary of uh, uh, from uh, today's uh, episode. So leaders are, uh, though the leaders are born uh, with uh, natural uh, leadership traits, uh, uh, when opportunity strikes the uh, person, the, uh, the leaders try to nurture the required skills to uh, fulfill the uh, uh, fulfill the requirement on that uh, situation to learn from the senior or to lead the team. So thereby they become the natural leader. Try to acquire the skills through a natural uh, by na becoming a natural uh, leaders. So this is one uh, what we could able to understand from the today's uh, conversation. And second is leader should always be a self-starter to jump into the situation and steer the team to towards the organizational goals, like what you explained about the labor conflict topic. And third one is uh, we should be, a, as a leader, should be a good observer to strike his uh, boundary between a good role model and a bad role model to see that where exactly is a boundary that we can demonstrate the leadership traits. And the qualities of a leader should be uh, more, uh, is more convicted and honest to uh, him my uh, themselves. Second is accountability. Third is empathy. Fourth is inspire to lead the team in the right direction. And fifth is uh, uh, appreciate and create a team bond. Next, we talked about the uh, trustworthiness, how we can be able to uh, inculcate on others by appreciating them. And next is ethical and justice towards uh, sustainability. And the most important quality of today's uh, UCA world is uh, having a stakeholder management and try to build more networking. Uh, like how you gave we demonstrated a classic example of uh, Guinea Konarki uh, in Africa place uh, where you set up a network with the Indian consulate in Africa to get you a task of uh, uh, reaching the bauxite ore from that country. Uh, next is be always updated with the latest skill for a future ready uh, situation. And leaders should always have a strategic uh, mindset approach in handling the uh, uh, dynamic changes. Uh, dynamic changes. And last but not least, people always uh, long for appreciation from the supervisor. So leaders should always ensure that they appreciate the subordinate at the appropriate time to build synergy and trust. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sandal Kumar, uh, for all the summary. You've nailed it. You've been, uh, I mean, it's proven that you've been a part of uh, the session the whole day. You know, uh, it's, you just could not resist to leave one point. You just summarized it entirely. And Rajesh and I are very happy in that matter, I guess. Um, I, I'm leaving the mic now to Janani for the vote of thanks. Before I give the mic, I'd like to tell all the members uh, to wait to introduce themselves after the vote of thanks. 
if rajesh sir want to remain for get the introduction of others you can sir otherwise i understand that you have a busy schedule you can you know carry on with your schedule however after that we have couple of minutes for all the new members to introduce themselves and to interact for the networking purposes all right so janani please go ahead yes uh, sorry actually before that uh, i would like to have one question for a doctor uh, with respect to uh, negative emotion uh when we talked about this neuropath and uh, psychologist i would like to understand the uh, uh, measures and traits that we need to take to control or overcome the negative emotion so mr Do dr mahesh you're talking about right sir yeah 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 so in the meanwhile i would like to check uh, in the honor of time sir mr rajesh would you like to be a part of it or uh, you have other schedules to go on sir no actually i some people are waiting for me so i think uh, i asked them to meet at 7:30 so mr sandil kumar is it okay we finish the vote of thanks and we continue yeah, with yeah. whatever with the yeah, questions yeah, to yeah, yeah. dr mahesh it is all right for you sir yeah yeah absolutely no problem. thank you very much sir yes janan Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Jani to share the word of thanks. And good evening, sir. Your discussion was a uh, very live with more real time examples, and I personally got more knowledge from your words. Thank you. Uh, before me sharing about the next week episode, let me quickly share again the purpose of the community. For the visitors who are attending for the first time, Leaders Connect three hundred and sixty is a hybrid model leadership community where every Wednesday from six thirty p.m. to seventeen p.m. we invite a top management leader from a reputed corporate company to suggest some solutions for our real time leadership challenges like the experience we had today from our guest mr rajesh mohata chudu please follow our social media platforms to know about our next week's guest registration link for the episode will be shared through social media platforms duly it is very simple to join a community do click on the social media links below it is gives me an immense pleasure to thank our guest mr rajesh mohata and panel discussion leader ms alagu and author dr mahesh abhyankar for spending a valuable time in sharing your experience and solutions thank you very much thank you very much leaders connect team thank you sir thank you mr rajesh thank you bye yes sir um sandil kumar i think you had a question to mr dr i mean dr yeah. mahesh yeah. so you, yeah, you can uh, yeah so i think we have to do a, a emotional audit for uh, this kind of a phenomenon we are doing a financial audit or we do audit for our factories but our own emotional audit is important that uh, from where the source of emotions are creating a problem or uh, what is the stressor which is creating problem for us and then try to uh, beat that stressor or try to avoid that stressor try to get uh, sensitized more for the stressor and the most important thing is that our reaction and response so whenever there is this kind of a stressor then whether we react or whether we respond so we have to respond in a very positive manner and for getting into a take care of stressor absolutely there are a lot of fitness ways which are there which we have to adopt whether it is a humor or whether it is involving ourselves in the hobby or meditation yoga there are so many ways are there to develop our own emotional resilience as well as gathering empathy so uh, some whichever way we uh, like to have we have to adopt that particular way that is very very critical during the particular period of time yeah. okay thank you very much thank you very much dr mahesh so this forum is open for all the visitors and members if you want to introduce yourself we will wait for another 2 minutes so that you can interact and visit uh, i mean talk to each other about introducing yourself the forum is open for everybody Happy, by the way, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sentil. I've been uh, with the uh, automotive industry for the 28 years of experience. Uh, been in the planet uh, in the scope of learning island as well as learning and development as well as in uh, quality uh, domain. Uh, presently, I've been associated with the Daimler India commercial vehicle as a senior manager responsible for upskilling of blue collar associates uh, from my uh, present learning and development domain. That's a short. Uh... Thank you very much, sir. I am very familiar with uh, you in that matter of you being a part of the MLA. That okay. way, I am familiar, I believe. So to introduce about myself, I'm a corporate trainer. I'm a freelancer. I uh, currently work and associate with Bija as well as Leaders Connect. I do a lot of corporate trainings, manufacturing trainings, and uh, I, I am specializing myself into coaching. And uh, these are few things I step here and there to develop myself internally and externally. 
that's about me. So um, I think um, it's it's good to be a part of the Leaders Connect episode today. Yeah, I think we have a thanking video. Yes, Dr. Mahesh. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I'm a med medical graduate from Mumbai and then uh, I worked in the hospital settings as an ICU specialist. But then I joined as a medical expert to pharmaceutical industry. Cipla was the company, then Cipla, then uh, IPCA, as well as uh, USV. And currently, I'm a director to, uh, in uh, Glowderma Pharma, along with my authorship. So I'm a pharmaceutical consultant, as well as a strategic advisor. And I also okay. take uh, leadership uh, programs as a, uh, a hobby. Yeah. Lovely, sir. Lovely, sir. Nice knowing you, sir. Yes, uh, Ms. Alugu Lakshman, and we're waiting for you to introduce, ma'am. Yeah, I think she's on network. Yeah. I, I've been having power issues, so I had to, you know, go, missed a few interesting topics here. I just wanted to say sorry, that's it. That's all right, ma'am. No worries at all. The episode is always there in the yeah, YouTube yeah. and LinkedIn. You can go ahead and watch it anytime, ma'am. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, yes, so... Uh... Uh, Janani, uh, Disha, I think we are uh, over with the connect. We can play the thank you video. And uh, thanks, anyone, everyone, for joining us today. It is a great pleasure uh, knowing all of us. And it's great being a part of the episode as usual, you know.